G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy. If you haven't been here before, my name is Tech, and I'm just letting you know that I'm filming on Wajak country, which is where I live and work. And uh, I've just been for a run, which is hence my gear. Uh, and I went to the post office on my way home, uh, picked up this box, which I'll be ready to open now. So I'm sitting in my garden, uh, birdsong in the air, and uh, let's open this box, which, as you can see, is from Weiberg. So let's have a go. Made in Canada. I'm assuming this is a shipping box. It is. And inside is the Vibo black box. So let's get this out. Packed tightly inside. Vibo box model, sizing, etc. Tissue paper, two pairs of laces, a very thin, I think this is leather, and a round cotton lace, a cleaning cloth, a Viberg product care guide, and the boots in their boot bags. What's this? Another care guide. Interesting. One for each boot, I suppose. And so let's open this up. In the boot bag, they come in plastic. Thick plastic, this is not only cheap plastic, mind you. And here is the Viberg service boot in the 2030 last, uh, last in oiled husk culata on a Ridgeway sole. So, on first glance, uh, the stitching is immaculate brogue cap toe with really quite immaculate stitching this is quite a thick uh quite stiff leather i'll have to research a little bit into what this leather is quite a thick ridgeway uh heel topper with a thinner um leather heel stack this is a stitch down construction where the upper is flanged out and stitched down, double row stitch down, and the spacing in that double row is quite incredible. Uh, it is so well done, I took a minute just thinking whether I should say that it was stitched down because it looks so blended in there that it's almost like a Goodyear welt. I cannot see anything wrong with that stitching. Let's try the other boot. And again, the first thing that strikes me is this is pretty stiff leather. Um, and the sole is pretty stiff. I can't bend it. Once again, the stitch town Stitching is perfection, really. Uh, very fine double stitching on the back stay. Really fine double stitching uh, on the quarters there with a the little box detail. 
and really fine stitching across the toe cap. I believe that's a real toe cap, in other words, a piece of leather over leather. I really like the Ridgeway sole for feel uh, and for grip, and yet from the side looks fairly sleek. I'm already thinking in my mind that uh, the breaking is going to be very interesting with this very thick leather and this uh, unbendable sole. Ungusseted tongue, which surprises me a little bit. I thought they'd at least be a semi gusset up here, but we shall see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine busy uh, brass eyelets. I'm going to put a few shots uh, on foot and see how they feel. Okay, so I've showered and shaved and uh, I'm at work downtown in my office and I'm going to try on uh, these new Vibo boots. I decided to go with the uh, very skinny um, flat wax cotton laces. They're the skinniest flat cotton laces that I've ever seen. Uh, and fits in quite well. Now, where's the end of the lace? Oh, here we are. Uh, strangely, the laces are actually uh, quite short. After all my experience with Pacific Northwest boot laces, which are quite long, they're quite fiddly to tie, and I might actually decide to uh, change these to the round cotton laces. All right. That was a bit messy. The fit is excellent. Uh, these are Viberg's seven and a half. Their standard width is an E width, um, and it's a UK seven and a half sizing system, which means it's equivalent to a US eight and a half, which is my true to size. So seven and a half UK is my true to size. Uh, these, by the way, are my White's MP boots that I wore to work, uh, and I might do a little comparison in a minute. But as for fit, 7.5 Viberg, uh, true to size, when I would usually wear uh, a 8 US, which is a 7 uh, UK. So I'd recommend going true to size in Viberg, but uh, taking one number down to go down to a UK sizing. Fits really good. Very stiff though. Let's take some shots walking. Very comfortable indeed. Uh, they are tight, they are snug, so they're going to definitely need um, a little breaking in. The sole is uh, stiff, and as you can see, the leather itself is quite a stiff leather. So. Um, they're going to need breaking in. As you saw earlier, I was wearing my White MP boots uh, to work when I was carrying uh, the Viberg 2030 service boots. So it hadn't occurred to me, and I don't usually do it in unboxing, but I thought it might be useful to compare the two. So let me have a look at the two right foots. Um, I think apart from the obvious design differences, the rounder toe last, for example, of the MP uh, versus a more almond-shaped toe of the 2030 last on the Viberg. I think the main difference is that uh, in the whites, you can see that a work boot company has decided to make a dressier, casual shoe that can still be worn for work, as tough as anything they build for work, uh, but with a dressier, more casual design. So all the elements and the procedures that they put into building a work boot are in this MP boot. 
So if you take a look at the stitch down, for example, it's, um, you know, there is no courtesy drawn towards fashion. These are very big hand uh, stitched uh, stitches. The uh, design is, is a little uh, chunkier as well. Um, whereas for the Weiberg, you can see a work boot company because the, uh, the history of Weiberg as a work boot maker, I think, still lives in this. But they've decided to go on a much dressier route uh, so that the stitching is much more refined. The uh, construction is still exactly the same as for uh, what they used to produce for their work boots. It's just as heavy. There's just as much leather and whatever else is in there that uh, causes that sturdiness. But quite clearly, you have a uh, decision to go refined versus a decision to use work boot skills to create a casual boot. Both are exceptionally good. Um, I know that white MPs are perfect for my feet, and these actually feel really good as well. So um, keep tuned. I'll put in a longer term review, uh, or an, at least an interim review of what I think of these Viberg service boots, and then I'll do a longer term review a bit later. And maybe at some stage, I'll do a real head-to-head uh, -head comparison of these two service boots. I thought you might be interested in uh, taking a look at the Viberg website because they're Spring Summer 2023 collection has just come up, and uh, as you can see, uh, it's it's I think just come on this week. Uh, and if we take a look at what's available, there's a series of. I mean, I guess there are slippers and slides and that sort of thing, but I'm really interested in the boots, and um, there's a couple of new uh, uppers in the service boots in the 2040. Uh, last, there's the Chestnut Brown Phoenix, and there's the T. Morrow TPR Horsebutt. Uh, there's a 2030 Brogue Capto in a T. Morrow TPR Horsebutt, and another 2030 in the Chestnut Brown Phoenix. Uh, if you look at their service boot collection, you'll see a whole series of uh, articles about their service boots and uh, showcasing their 2030 last, for example, and then the 310 last with a chunkier round toe, um, you know, with a, with a very pronounced toe spring. Uh, the 2040 service boot, uh, which is their more vintage version, quite similar to the 2030, but it has a wider uh, forefoot, a um, little bit more of a toe spring, I think. Uh, and then the 1035, which is the roundest toe of the uh, service boots, follows the 2030, but with a rounded toe. Uh, and they talk about Chrome XL and so on. So go on and take a look at the uh, Viberg website. There are some uh, delightful, mouth-watering boots in here. So that's my unboxing of the Viberg um, service boots in the 2030 last in uh, uh, Husk oiled culata uh, and I'll give you a, 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 a better longer review of uh, how I feel wearing them in a, in a few weeks and then my longer term uh, review on uh, the details of the boot. Until then guys take care, uh, don't forget to click on like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you soon.